Welcome our next uh, guest, uh, Richie Lundris and Eric Bobo of uh, Swan Victo and Cypress Hill. Uh, Richie, what's up, man? Hello, sir. How you doing? <laughs> awesome to have you on. We, uh, we've we been uh, really excited to get you on here. So, uh, it's a big Pleasure. deal for us. <laughs> mm. We've been talking all week, and uh, yeah, so I mean... It's a, it's a big night. It's a big night. It's Friday night, man. So uh, we just all want to. Yeah, Friday night, night in Los Angeles. Yeah. All well, good. Nice seeing you here with Eric. So um, we're all uh, ready to roll. Awesome. How are you guys doing? Oh, hey. How's it going? Chilling, <laughs> chilling. Just, uh, just right here. All right. Good. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> mm. So yeah, man. I, I was on. Uh, I, I thought I was going to get stuck on the. Um, the listeners bit then, because I couldn't work out how we were dialing in, but I'm glad we did. So, right. <laughs> yeah, and, and apparently, so I guess what did you have to you have to like make an account with Blog Talk yeah, Radio. Yeah, we're, we're oh, a uh, my own radio show <laughs> if I want. So. Yeah, yeah, that's that's bullshit. That's bullshit as far as I'm concerned. You shouldn't yeah, have to like make an account through them to do that. But we, right. the thing is, like, there's some some guests that we've had on haven't had to do that, and some have had to do that. So I don't know what's going on with that. But maybe maybe because he's British. Yes, yeah, because I'm English. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that could, yeah. Okay. So it's your fault, Richie. It's all your fault. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I tried to warn him. I tried to warn him. I know. So uh, as soon as I arrived here, I had the weather in New York kind of, um, yeah, stopped me from getting to L.A. And then I got to L.A. and now it's raining, so it probably is me, I'm guessing. You guys, you guys have some sort of crappy weather out there anyway, so. Oh, yeah, it's standard this every day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. Like, we, I mean, like, a lot of our uh, guests are from the West Coast, so when okay. they find out that me and Mark are from Maine and they find out Jeff right. is from uh, Pennsylvania, they're yeah. like, you know, I kind of I, I kind of get jealous because, like, oh, it's so nice and warm out here and, like, me and Mark are up here in Maine and we're yeah. dealing with all, like, snow the and shit. The rest of the out there is, is fucked up, man. So, I have to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, in the winter, in the winter, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have your good days, but winter time is not the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know what, me and, Mark, me, me and Mark are used to it, and that, and that's the thing with Maine, like, we're definitely used to it. Um, yeah, I'm thin-skinned, you know, West Coast, you know, so anything below 60 is, you know, freezing to me. <laughs> Oh, geez. You wouldn't like um, it up here very much. That, <laughs> no, 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 no. See, you, should, you should see when I bring him up to London, he's uh, got a oh, no. jacket. Yeah, I'm like hat. triple layered. You don't even know it's me. Yeah. I'm ninja'd up. Yeah. And it's summertime as well. So. There we go. You, you guys, you, get, you, you both need to make a trip to Maine and spend a couple of days up in Maine and just kind of get used to it and, you know, <laughs> just do it. It's something yeah. you should do. If you got a checklist on, you know, or some sort of bucket bucket list or whatever, man, come to Maine. Just come to Maine during the winter and spend like a week up here, like maybe in, like, yeah. January or something, dude. You know, oh, just do it. That's just do not, it. Stop, 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 stop. That's not I'm not feeling at all. I'm not afraid. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Oh, <laughs> I love to. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to write something on their plane tickets like we're going somewhere else. We're going to Hawaii and then uh, switch them up. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Tr- trick you. All of a sudden you're getting off in Bangor, Maine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the, I know that Stephen King is around there, right? So, you know. Yeah. You know, I know he's got his house heated up, so, he, you know, <laughs> maybe go over there and hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So it's, your, uh, it's the 40th show, yeah? 40th, yeah. 
Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, no, we're excited. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to get a bit of uh, sarcasm over in the States. I like it. I'm not used to it, so it's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you'll get, yeah. You'll get a lot of sarcasm yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm right at home. Definitely full of that, full of sarcasm. There's no okay. doubt about that. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, we're oh, really pleased to be That was fantastic, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like silence right there. Sorry, oh, yeah, really? that's it. <laughs> Tumbleweed. Yeah. So I don't know what direction you guys want to take this. I mean, what we want to talk about here. I was hoping it would get more into like the conspiracy sense. But, uh, oh, of course Jeff would, because Jeff is the uh, conspiracy <laughs> theory guy. So I don't don't <laughs> pin that shit on me. You're not gonna put it on me. It's my bet. Blame it on me. It's uh, everything. Yeah, sure. No, dude, it, it, it's uh oh. that's what people want to hear. That's 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 what's uh you know the mysterious. That's what uh like Mark Dice uh, video type. What do you think about his videos? Because I mean I'm sure you know of who he is. Yeah, I've, I've seen his videos. I mean he's um. He's quite sure of himself, I guess. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's quite confident in what he says. Um, but for me, with all this stuff, it's, you know, you have to cross-reference a lot of different avenues until you can kind of find your own truth in it, you know. So I kind of take everything with a pinch of salt, and then I'll kind of feel out yep. what I think it relates to me. You know, I can't just hear someone and go, yep, that's definitely it, because everyone's trying to shout their opinions, and I oh, guess... Yeah. No. That, that's how that's how it works. So, so it's um, it's all good. Yeah, so you, they, they bring up some interesting points. Um, certainly, I think some of them, the the thing that gets me is sometimes when you're not part of a scene and you're looking from the outside in, you can get some misconceptions. I think, and you can go a bit wild yeah. with it in anything. Yeah, I, um, no, I, you, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. So, so what is this scene? I mean, how seriously are these people taking it? Is it just like for? Uh, for exposure to sell to sell uh to sell records to for uh controversy is it uh or is it something more i mean i mean in my opinion we're never gonna you're never gonna truly know what goes on you know really um you can have an idea from from what you know in my from what i can see it's like in the same way you had in the 90s you had hip-hop and they were associating themselves with like mafiosa kind of talk things like that to give it a bit of a and a more of an edge as well. Um, so these days, now you've you've kind of got all these artists tagging on to this, you know, secret society stuff. When a lot of them know it's just going to wind people up. It's just going to get them attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a bit. It's kind of a lot of plastic imagery, in my opinion. And because it's so in your face, it's just like it's too ridiculous to kind of, you know, to to really comprehend. They know what they're doing. It's just like, you know, it, it's a way of it's a way of selling records, you know. To right. 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 You got, yeah. You got, the that, yeah. That, you got the people that do that for that attention, and they they have their thing of why they're doing it. But the the people that are really maybe maybe are involved in it ain't saying it. And right. I, you know, they're they're just on the DL, just like how a lot of things that we don't know <laughs> are on the DL, or we know, but they're all on the DL. You know what I mean? But I, I'm. I'm saying that it, it's just really, you know, the way that the game is played, and you know, you you have to latch on to something, and you know that uh, the public or society is kind of clinging on to this thought of Illuminati or or secret society or whatever the case. You know, why not talk about it? Why not give out some clues? Because they've read a couple of books, and and they know a little bit of about what you know that they may be about. And 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 then you know let's profit from it. You know it's, right. it's it's just part of some people. That's the way that they play the game. You know mm. you're you're getting somewhere there. I mean, there's the people really behind the scenes that we should be concerned about. Yep. I mean, because if yep. anything, all this entertainment stuff could just be uh, like a distraction to like magi- mag- yeah. magician sleight of hand. Like look over there. You know it's them, yeah. and they're just really just actors, uh, like representing what it's like. But they're pro. Half of them, if they are involved in it, they can't take it that seriously. I mean, they can't be that uh, into it. 
They, I guess I guess some of them probably could be like they could think there's some sort of like witches or sorcerers and like playing around with magic or whatever. But I can't see them like being taken too serious by the actual uh, people behind the scenes, the oligarch, whatever you want to call them, the Illuminati, as some you know, as most uh, refer to them. I can't see them taking these uh, entertainers too seriously and like. Well, they, they they probably they probably don't, but then they they probably welcome the distraction from what they're really trying to do because right. see that these people of influence that are talking about it are going to have a lot of people that are going to follow their lead, and if it's going off in a completely different direction than what yep. uh, the real deal is going on, they're going to welcome that, and oh, yeah. uh, right. and it's, it's really going to go down in and. They're not gonna know how it happened, you know, because it just came from a whole other different way. Hmm. So I mean, so possibly, I mean, Mark Dice could end up being uh, doing a disservice. I mean, I don't know. So, well, that's, I know, that's the kind of you got to question everything, obviously, no yeah. matter what, is, you know. Um, right. And any anyone that questions stuff is, is doing a service, you know, whether they're, whether they're kind of right or wrong, you know, they. As long as if you're passionate about something, then I think that's where it kind of comes into it. But you have to be careful with these days. As soon as you say something, it's out there. It gets taken as gospel, and then that's that. You know, you kind of can't go back from that. So you have to be very, very sure about what you say about any particular subject these days, because you, you know you can't kind of take it back anymore. It's like well, you know, well, I'm I'm screwed. I mean, because that's all we do on this show is speculate. You know, and like <laughs> hypothesize and, and can, guess. Well, not all the time. Maybe you do, but I don't. Know. Well, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, if you're kind of going out, going, hold on a sec. This yeah. is this is definitely how it is. This is what's going on. That that's quite a big risk because you you can't tell for certain what's happening. You know, you can and I you know I, I, I'm in the industry. I've, I've met some of these people. They talk about and it's it can be further from the truth about them personally. Um, it's just what you get. There's a lot of it's the circus, you know. You've got you've got flashing lights, you've got videos half the time. You, you know, one day to the next, you know, these people are so busy they don't even know what they're doing. They just go, okay, here, video shoot today, touring tomorrow. It doesn't actually, you know, it's not like they're sitting around going, okay, right, we need to do it like this. And it's just, you know, it's just too busy for them. So, you know, I I, I think you know they're kind of missing the missing. It's like you said, it's a distraction. It's missing the kind of real deal, and it's kind of going to the glamour and the lights and going, oh yeah, those are the, you know, they're they're involved in that and. You know, I, I don't think that's really the case most of the time. I, I don't really believe that. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, it's uh, across, it, you can talk about any industry. It's the same thing. Exactly. It is. It, it's oh, like sure. back in the day when they found out that sex sells and they started using that to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And yeah. and now it just seems like it's uh, it, it's not enough anymore because sex is just everywhere. It was played out, so now it's the occult. It seems. Yeah, exactly. Every every kind of generation, you're going to have a trigger. That kind of, regardless of how you how you think the overall plan is, or if there is a plan, that it, right. it's used, it's used as a method because they you know they know our triggers, the marketing people. You look at any advertisers marketing, it's it's quite sinister how deep it goes in that regard. You know, like there's people sitting around going, you know, if you listen to any kind of Bill Hicks describes it best and things like that. When you when you've got people who sit around thinking of products they can sell to people they know are gonna they're going to hurt them, but they don't care. They're just trying to find a way to get you. Um, there was quite an interesting thing I was watching. It's on the plane over here, actually, and it was, uh, you might have seen it. They, they were kind of testing how babies respond before they can talk and communicate properly to sort of good and bad. And they had, uh, they had one puppet who was green, one puppet who was orange, and one of the puppets would try and help another one open a box, and the other one would try and stop it and cause it a problem. Um, and they kept switching them around and so it was kind of all the variables had changed and then the babies were shown the puppet and they always picked the one that was generally good um, like 99% of the time and this is when they're about six months you know before they can kind of articulate properly um, and even even though that's interesting that's still quite scary as far as how they can start studying us from that age to go right okay we need to at this age we can sell them this at this age they'll be into this and it you know it's right. You know, you just have to watch kids' TV and like, you know, with colours and stuff, and it just kind of stays with you. Um, that that I think is the most dangerous thing out of anything. That, regardless of 
like I said, what you believe the overall plan is. I just think it's quite dangerous how we're manipulated, especially right. these technology, from such a young age, and there's no escaping it really. And you re you really have to kind of go out and become like a, you know, a, a guy living in the woods to kind of get rid. And it's and it's, it shouldn't be like that. You should be able to have the option of. You know, Absolutely, it's like it's heavy, heavy conditioning. Yeah, it's dangerous. Whatever the app, I say, it's just dangerous because you get people who are not thinking for themselves. And um, I mean, I've noticed it in it's all over the world. But you know, I'm driving out in London, and you just get people walking out in the street without even looking at the cars. They'll just walk because they're on the phone, and and it just happens. And this has only been a thing happening in the last five years, and it's like it's quite yeah. scary. Yeah. No one's looking. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. I mean, it, 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 it's got to be a collection of things. I, I mean, it, it can't just be, you know, uh, influence from the government or the education. I mean, it, it could be all sorts of toxins. Who knows? I mean, you know, that's why I can't be an advocate for one thing. You got advocates that are just, you know, for chemtrails or whatever, geoengineering, and then you got people for fluoride. There's, then you got radiation. It's, it's like everything. It, it seems to be that everything is just being used against the population to make us more and more stupid and like you said it's like get them while they're young you know and like uh indoctrinate them at a young age and feed them it used to just be it seemed to be like that way for religion but it it, it it's just it's just like that forever they want to like teach sex education in preschool now or something i don't know about that that's just crazy they're, they're trying to make it you know it's, it's going too fast you know technology is going too fast it's all going too fast there was there was a time that we were kind of ahead of the curve on that. You know, technology wasn't moving that quick. But even in, in that in that retrospect, now the technology is even far more advanced than we are at right now that we don't yeah. even know. And that's the shit that you have to be afraid of. Yeah, you're not kidding, dude. Some heavy, heavy-duty shit that, that is so out there that... You know, we won't. We couldn't believe that it even exists now, and it gets that gets into the wrong hands. You know, yeah. we're done. You know, so you're not kidding, dude. That's like a huge concern with the, that the singularity and the technology is just going to keep getting crazier. And at one point, you know, yeah. it could just become like the Matrix or something. Yeah. Like and, and you know, it's gonna it's gonna happen that you're gonna get the the big companies gonna continue to swallow up, and it's gonna gonna be monopolized. You know, and Right. Well, you know, eventually it's, it's going to be that real big brother shit, it, it, but ten times worse, maybe. You know, I don't know. Well, that's a big thing. You're talking about monopolies. I mean, we all know monopolies and like corporate interest. You know, with the government and fascism. Like, technically, that's what fascism is—just the merger of corporation and government. And clearly, we're there. But I mean, that's the thing. People see like monopolies. They know it's true. They know that you know some technology is being suppressed. But they don't look at, like, the monopoly of information. Information is, like, one of the key ways to control us. So it makes sense that there's a monopoly on information. And they use – they can use science. I love science, but it's like a lot of these scientists seem to be in the back pockets. And if something doesn't go the way they want it to, then grant money, funding gets pulled, and, and uh, anything that could possibly benefit humanity just seems to get suppressed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was looking, like, there's, like, a cure for AIDS or something in 1996, a, a patent number and all, and it's out there, but it's just not being taken advantage of. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because uh, I was in Spain uh, a couple years back, and there was a, a thing on the news talking about uh, an actual cure for HIV, mm -hmm. uh, something that has been tested and has been proven, and I was looking at that. And I knew that I was never going to see that in the States. Mm. You know, they right. weren't even going to talk about it. They weren't even going to mention this or say that there was a, any kind of discovery like that. And I was right because I had right. seen it. You know, uh, science is, is controlled. Yep. You know, oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it's controlled. As you say, you know, uh, people have got their hands in their pockets. That's why science is controlled. So some of those theories really may not even be theories. They might be closer to yeah. practical, you know what I mean? And, Absolutely. Uh, that's, Dude, that's a crazy especially with, like, the pharmaceutical industry because yeah. 
<laughs> they're probably like them and the FDA. I mean, that's just crazy how bad it is, you know? Right. You know, I mean, well, yeah. maybe maybe all this like what's going on in entertainment, like with like you know Illuminati or whatever. Maybe that's all a distraction from what really matters. Stuff yeah. you know. Yeah. Entertainment is a, it's entertainment. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. And, that, and 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 that's that's what it is, and and that's the biggest distraction. You know how uh, you know what a bigger distraction is to find out that so and so is pregnant from so and so, or this couple's got together, or what they're wearing, or what they're doing. You know the Kardashians and whatever every movie that they're making. You know that's what the people are looking at, and that's the that's the big shield. You know, entertainment is the big shield, right? You know, um, you know, we we we're we're doing we do music because we love it. We do we do it because you know it, it's it's something it's a it's a passion, you know. But for the powers that be, you know, it, it's it's something else. Well, I'm glad that just went that in yeah. that direction. I, I I like I like that me, all that me was too. covered. Me and that, and yeah. that's why I'm glad to have you guys on because you guys handle handle it the right way and that's why I have a lot of respect for you guys because you definitely handle it the right way and uh, there's a lot of uh, musicians that don't and they take advantage of that and um, I didn't want to get into all this stuff so quickly but just went ahead and asked so I, yeah, I can't, I can't uh, help that but um, oh, it's a conversation <laughs> yeah exactly that's what, that's what the show is about we don't we don't want to totally like interview people. We want to have a conversation, and uh, yeah. that's what makes our show special from other people. You know, I mean, we we want to have a conversation. But uh, if we can just like kind of skip back, and we can get into that after. We did, we did definitely get into that a little a little, a little quicker than I thought. But um, <laughs> I, back, back to the band. I, I just I want to get into that. Um, uh, how I mean, like, how did how did you guys, you know, like how how did you guys like meet up and uh, decide that you know like you and uh, obviously like Stefan is a uh, I mean I'm a I'm a big Deftones fan so that's how I found I mean obviously I I knew about Eric way back in the day and um, yeah. but you guys all met up somehow and uh, I know like. Stefan's in, in, into more of that music and in, in, in or whatever. But how did how did you guys all just like get together? How did how did that start? Uh, it was, well, it's quite a natural kind of process. Um, I started out when I decided, you know, I, I was working. I was a musician. I was working as well. Um, and then I just you know figured one day, look, unless I quit my job and run this full time and give it a go. I'm never going to know if it's going to work or not. So, um, yeah, I, I quit my job and then didn't know what I was going to do. I started a little record label, uh, started selling T-shirts. And then a friend of mine uh, who was a rapper, but he was brought up in Bolivia, He, um, he I said to him, look, let's try doing, a, you know, I fancy doing like a Spanish hip-hop project. And uh, we started that. And then I was, obviously, I was a big fan of Cypress Hill growing up. Um, and I got online and kind of found Muggs's, uh, DJ Muggs's website and just seeing what was going on with the guys and I think I it was quite you know this is like 2000 and when was it about 2005 yeah maybe. yeah yeah early on like that and uh, I'd not really kind of used the internet very much I'd more you know just playing guitar and stuff and hanging out and uh, I remember I settled an argument which which now is a normal argument for the internet but to me it seemed really logical these two kids were arguing over something ridiculous so I stepped in with like a big post of like you know listen guys blah, 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 you know, just like a complete <laughs> amateur, effectively. And then the next day I came back and uh, had an email saying, oh, congratulations, you've been made the uh, forum administrator. And I was like, what the hell is that? I don't even know what that is, so let me look at this. Hmm. And then, um, yeah, so I started running the running the forum for him. And then uh, Muggs, they came over to play at the garage in London. And he said, yeah, yeah, come down, man. And obviously I was producing at that time, so I thought I'd go down with some records. Uh, so I went down with a batch of records and um, I got to the show and then I remember I saw Muggs in the crowd. I went to meet him and then I introduced myself as my name, Richie, um, instead of my internet handle, which I completely you know, didn't realize. But So he looked at me, oh, it's Richie, how's it going, man? He went, yeah, nice to meet you. And then just kind of walked off and I went, they're fucking rude. <laughs> he told me to come 
and then I, and then I figured it out. I was like, oh, he doesn't know who I am. I've never introduced myself as that. So um, I had to hang around outside the show for like an hour, I think, and because uh, I couldn't get in. The guy was like, no, sorry, you haven't got a pass. So I said, look, man, I, I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to wait here. So you're just going to have to deal with me So until I catch someone's eye. And I'd seen, I'd, I'd spoke to Eric briefly online because um, I sent him some tunes and I'm, I'm sort of standing there and waving right. and trying to get their attention. And then it was at least an hour's gone by and then the security guy was like, oh, I need to go, man. Can you watch the door for a minute? And I was like, okay, fair enough. So um, I actually watched the door. I, didn't know, I watched the door for him. And I just remember two girls came out and they went, oh, is it okay if we... Uh, go out and come in again. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Obviously it wasn't, I didn't know that. But um, So they got out and then, then Eric saw me, the guy came back and I went, yep, yeah, and got introduced and I got through. And as I got into the party, I saw these girls come back in and the bouncer's like, what are you doing? You can't come back in. They're trying to point me out and I'm sort of ducking through the crowd and just like, but, uh, so it's quite an eventful, you know, night. But I got to meet him and we, you know, exchanged some records. I had some vinyls with me. Um, and then it just kind of grew out of that. We started playing in the um, the Spanish uh, group we're doing called Tour Londres. And then uh, I also make drum and bass with a friend of mine, AJ. And we we had a track and I'd send it to Eric. Um, just like, yeah, check this out, man, see what you think. And then a few weeks later, he sent me it back. There's all the guitars on it. And I was like, okay, sounds pretty good. And Eric was like, casually, like, oh, yeah, you know, I played it to Steph. And uh, he put some guitars down. I was like... Death phone step and he's like, yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of seized the opportunity. I was like, yeah. We, so we're doing a group then. And he was like, yeah, okay. So I was like, sweet. So that was good. And then, um, yeah, just kind of grew, it just grew out of that really. Just like a, a, you know, sort of quite a chilled out, you know, project. We just send ideas backwards and forwards. Um, but yeah, it all kind of came through the Cypress Hill connection, and and then we were, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, something that was, something like that. 2006, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then um, uh, actually the first uh, song released out out on like a label of uh, Soul and Victor was a bonus track on my solo album, Meeting of the Minds, which came out in 2008. This is a song that uh, I surprised Richie with uh, <laughs> uh, having Steph on it because uh, he, he was, you know, me and him were very good friends and uh, he he was listening to drum and bass at the time. And I was into that as well. So when I had the track, I thought in my mind, man, this would be kind of dope, man. Maybe I played for Steph. Maybe you lay something down on it. So he heard it, and he was all hopped up on it and everything. So we recorded his stuff over at his house. And, uh, you know, I didn't really tell Richard about it. <laughs> and, you know, I just, uh, you know. Like just, yeah, 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 just, you know, do it. And, and if he didn't like it, then, you know. But uh, yeah, it was kind of like that, and then um, we just decided to let's 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 do this. Let's try to make some music, and here, here we are. Yeah, and I think because we're all on the same page as far as I mean, these guys have obviously come at it, you know, from a different aspect, considering they're really successful, and I'm I'm not at all. Fans, <laughs> <laughs> don't let them yeah, fool yeah, you. Yeah, 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 he does. Yeah, okay, but, you know, just playing it down, of course. But um, no, so but even so, even even though they came from that, and I came from you know, from literally from you know from the ground up kind of thing. I mean, I I started off in bands and and then realised that to find four coherent musicians that didn't want to get drunk and fucked up all the time was going to be quite a chore. So yeah, I decided of course. Using, you know, I just thought, right, I can make I can make songs on my own. I don't you know need to deal with this business. Um, so I kind of came up through that and then started my label and I managed the group I was in and promoted them and did, you know, I kind of had a taste of everything in the industry. Um, and we all kind of met at the same, you know, um, at the same point really, we kind of, we just want to make music for ourselves, um, without any, like, cause before, before I kind of started thinking like that, you think you have to act in a certain way, like, oh, I have to do you know, my CD, I have to send it to the radio, I have to get press and right. through all these kind of channels, which, which is why I love the internet because you don't, you don't, all these people that kind of were gatekeepers to music, they've gone. Yeah. Um, and granted that now there's a lot of, there's a lot of shit out there that you have to go through. Like music wise, there's not, a, there's a lot of terrible bands that shouldn't be out there at all, but they are. Um, that still allowed a lot of people who wouldn't be able to get their music out there to get it out there. So I'm all for the internet, and that's why 
when we release stuff, I, I release it all for free because um, I don't want to get into that bullshit. Yeah, and it, yeah. And it, it, it frees you up as a musician. It, obviously, it's not cost effective, you know, and you do need yeah. to earn a living from it. But at the end of the day, I believe that you give people something um, that you love, and if they love it too, they're going to share it, and that's all you need. Yep. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that's and, awesome. Yeah, like for example, I'm I'm never going to kind of go through um, any press people. Like it's always going to be direct to the fans, and and uh, that's, that's so the when you, you make your that's so you, respectable. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So you make your money off your shows then? You, you well, put, put, we haven't played any yet, so I'm just that's skin, the thing. Yeah, yeah. No, we haven't played. You know. <laughs> Uh um, so we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna definitely do it. I mean it's you know, from scheduling and, and, and things like that and everybody living in a different spot and getting it all yeah. together, you know. It's been it's been one thing. Yeah. But uh now we really want to make a solid uh uh album, a solid project that is really gonna live up to what the fans are expecting yeah. from us, from what the right. what we about, yeah, you know what I mean? Not make it like it's a side project. Just make it yeah. sort of yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I I see what you're saying. Yep. Project for Steph is just, you know a side project for Eric. Um, it's my main project, so I guess that the the thing is. Um, I don't want to. Obviously, it's nice to have that link. You know, it's nice to, that we're getting fans through the Deftones, we're getting fans through Cypress Hill. But it really needs to right. stand on its own two feet as a body. Right. Um, and at this point, because like I said, because like Eric was saying, because we're in uh, different continents and stuff, it's, it, we haven't been able to kind of get together until this point really and really sit down and, and come up with a sound and and what we actually want to, you know, what we want to put out there. Um, sure. So the stuff we put out, we like it, I like it, but it's still kind of, it's more demos, it's more like ideas, seeing what people are into. Um, the production's quite lo-fi because do, I do it all myself, I just kind of master everything and do it, you know, I, I do everything you shouldn't do really, I kind of just, you know, sometimes I just, you know, preset, mastering on Logic, bang, it's yeah, done, you know. Yeah. And I, you shouldn't technically do that, but it, it cuts out another thing that you don't need, really. Um, so it's just about making the least steps from us to the fans, uh, as possible, just to cut all that rubbish out. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to send oh. up to a magazine saying, "Oh, please review our stuff, tell us what you think," and then hopefully, you know, it's like bollocks. It's a waste of time. Um, if they want to review it, amazing, but they can do it on on my terms after the fans have heard it. Because uh. uh, I don't really care what someone in a magazine says about the CD. I care about what we think. Right. I care about if people are into it, then that's it. That's it. It's as simple as it gets. Um, that, that, that's perfect. That 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 you know, and that's. As a big fan of you guys, that's that's what I, that, I know that other fans, that's what I want to hear, and that's what a lot of the actual real fans want to hear. Um, and I think a lot of people respect that because, like... Dude, I, I, I'm not even, like, uh, familiar with the whole industry in that sense, but I can completely respect everything you just said, man, like, 100%. Yeah. And it, oh, yeah. If you know, anything, it, it makes it even more appealing. You know, it, it's real because, I mean... Uh, myself and and also Steph have you know been through the the major label uh, mill so to speak mm-hmm. and knowing how it works and how they embrace you when when you're hot and they distance themselves when you're not you know and sure. you know it's I remember the days of making that call and being able to talk to the top dog you know no problem and get that that interview and but when you're not selling then you're you're on that waiting list you know right. and, right. and you know you they're they're telling you what you have to do and 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 you have to you know change your 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 things about your your craft your your music and you shouldn't have to that's not what music is about exactly so i think the best thing that it probably could have happened is the fact of having the internet so 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 big that you know we can get our music out there directly to the fans and and not have to go through that mill and right. they decide what's the single or what to put out or what video we should do when we can do it mm-hmm. and and we can we make the decision and and it's up to the fans mm-hmm. and and to me 
the way that we've done it and the the people that are anxious to hear our stuff and, and, and the fans have been, it's been crazy because it's been no big label push, you know, mm-hmm. and that's all that I've seen is a big label push, but this is, this is so much more gratifying. It must give you like a, a real sense of freedom to kind yeah. of do what you want. Of course, of course, it's because, you know, that's, that's what music is. You know, when you're first writing these, uh, your songs, every big group, you know, when they, they're writing songs that eventually become their big hit record, what were they doing? They were just vibing. They were doing something, you know, just because of the love, you know. Mm-hmm. They were jamming. They were, you know, it was a vibe. It wasn't anybody telling them what to do or, or how to do it and what to change and, and no, they don't like that or what's the single. They just did the music. Hmm. And that every every great album, that a debut album or whatever album that's grown up big for a group, that's what it was. Hmm. Nothing Point blank, yeah. nothing else. Hmm. Right, yeah. they were just they were getting together and they were putting their feelings together and and, and making some music. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's that's what you that's what you need to do. And it's kind of hard nowadays when you are known uh, when people are like shoving the, the the thing that you have to be in uh, on on the, the the radio you have to get your video on MTV you have to you know look at the state of MTV it took a lot of music now it's breaking nothing mm. you know what i yeah. mean yeah yes. oh garbage it, it's bullshit it's so you know that that avenue has been replaced by bullshit mm. you know and and why yeah. but, you know money you know, and they got big money that they don't like to spend. You know, they work their, they work their employees down to death, and they don't pay them what they're really worth. You know, it, it's all it's all fucked up. Yeah, that's it. There's, there's a lot of things that stop you from actually being creative in the creative process, which is, you know, what should be. Music is, you know, when I started thinking about music as an art form rather than music, it changed the way I thought about it, and you know, if you if you if you're a painter, you just paint, and people view your stuff, and that's it. It doesn't really, you know, you don't really paint and say, right, I need to market my painting online and all this sort of rubbish. You just kind of do it, and uh, right. you know, it, it's yeah, it's like um, it's it's freedom, and it and it's like it's quite not scary, but it's quite like you don't know what you're getting into. You you just got to kind of give up control, and and that's the only way you can kind of um, move forward in life. You you gotta stop anything that prevents you from, you know, doing your craft or gets in your way. You just cut it out. And that's that, and that's how simple it should be, really. So, um, at this point, I just, uh, for me personally, I just wanted to create something that was easy, accessible. There's no bullshit. Like we don't have to go through any people. I just phone Eric up. I phone Steph up. We get together. We do some music. I mix it down. I master it, and then I put it out, and that's it. And and that's how simple it. Is. Um, that's how it should be. That's how yeah. It be. I mean, I'm not. You know, there, there's a lot of great people in the industry, and I've, I know a lot of people in the industry. I, I, you know, there's there's still a good faction of it that is, you know, is in it for the right reasons. But the majority of it, everyone's kind of everyone wants a piece, but they're not involved in the actual music. So it's right, just right. confusing. You know, everyone wants it. That's why I feel sorry for a lot of these big artists because they're. You know, the, at the end of the day, they probably just wanted to be singers and entertainers, and then they've just got a swarm of people around them just taking everything from them. Like they, they don't. That's why they don't care about. You know, I've got no respect for you know Justin Bieber as a musician. He's not even a musician as, as any any regard. I mean, obviously he can sing, but he, you know, it, it's a cabaret, and I feel sorry for the guy because all the people around him, they want him to be like that because they're getting paid. Yeah. You know, right. he's not going to have what, a problem. 19, 19 like, years old, so I mean. He's a kid. Yeah, exactly. oh, yeah. he, he, he's a child, yeah. pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's yeah. horrible. Like, he's, he's not got... It's the same that happened to Britney Spears and all these other people. Oh, They're yeah. vulnerable. And, they, and you've got to feel sorry for them because they... It is, dude. It's sad. You know, really people, sad. Day, people can slag them off and say, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But they're just people and they're, they're not... They're not the big, powerful thing that they're portrayed as. They're just literally the full guy. You know, they're at the front. I mean, you can switch Bieber and Britney with anyone. It doesn't make a difference. They're still going to you know, do the same thing. It's still, the music doesn't change. They're, you know, like, 
uh, you know, One Direction now. They could be anyone. They, you could just put anyone up there, you know, and, and it wouldn't change anything. There's nothing personal about them in their music. There's nothing real. It's all completely for show. That, and that, and that's, the, that's the side of the industry that you can't play against. Unless you want to just literally bend over and, and just take it. That's the only way. In, that's it. That's the only way you can enter the industry. If you want to actually be a musician, um, then you have to go the independent route, you know, and there's a lot of great independent labels and yep. that obviously I could, we could work with a label and we've been offered a few and stuff, but, um, and you know, we, we, we might sign it cause it does help when you, when you get to, I can deal with it now, but obviously if it did get quite busy, I wouldn't be able to deal with it all on my own. So I would have to have some, you know, people to help me. But, um, once you've, the thing is for me, once we've kind of proven ourselves and we've got our fan base and we've got everything rolling, then we can call the shots. You don't have to kind of go, okay, can you help us? I need help. You, do you want to help us grow or not? That's it, you know. Right. Well, that's the same thing with us. It's no, it's no different than what like we're doing here. I mean, we rely on me and Jeff and Mark to do our own promoting, and uh, we're not Dude. we're not we're not looking for other people to. I mean, we want friends to help us out. And uh, it's the, it's the same exact thing with the uh, videos. I'll, I'll make videos on the uh, YouTube. Yeah. I, I I learn how to do the editing on myself. I learn how to market myself. I write that shit on my own. Right. And I find the music, all that crap. Dude, it's totally what it's about. I mean, you can't, exactly, you have to do it. You have to be, your your heart has to be in it and the passion. Of course. And, well, yeah. and, it's, and it, you, you do have to be a lot, as a musician now, you have to be a bit of a an entrepreneur as well. Um, so oh, oh, definitely. definitely. That comes hand in hand. I think that's good. It makes you grow as a person. It's, yeah. Yep. So there's, there's that's no, what, probably why a lot of musicians, you know, they start their own clothing line or something like that to actually get some money because obviously you're not getting money off selling CDs and stuff like that because the record label's going to take all that money. So you know, it's, 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 it's important, you know, to if you know if you have other other means, you know, uh, ways to, to try different things. You know, yeah. you should. Do you know, for the people that are doing a clothing line, like, you know, I've started one myself, you know, it's just about knowing that business, knowing those things, you know, because just because you know music doesn't know mean you know fashion, doesn't mean you know about that whole industry. You have to know, you have to do your homework. Hmm. So whatever it is that you, you know, you're going to get into, you know, the successes and what, you know, what you, you know, know and, and also who you know. So, you know, it, it's, you, you got to think that now the days of selling 10 million records <laughs> that easy are gone. Now it's gone back to, wow, you make gold and you get that gold plaque. That's big now. Selling 500,000 copies, a million, just go platinum, one-time platinum. You're good because, you know, now you don't have, you know, that, that that thing of how it was before that you know people going and buying your records and like that you know it's it's now it's we're in the age of streaming and all this kind of stuff so again it's a sort of control you know and but what what can you do you know we 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 all have to you know we all have to eat and we all have to do what you know we love and, you know we try to but. You know, it's it's the game. You know, it's 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 fucked up, but yeah. it's the game. It is, yeah, right. it is. It definitely is. That that's why I respect you guys so much. You know, it's not the only reason why I respect you guys so much, but you take a, a the perfect approach, and that that is respectable for like people like people like me and your your actual real fans. Uh, yeah. I know that they really respect what both of you are doing. And I know there's a lot of other people in the music industry that are doing the same thing. And, and you know, to bring Deftones up again, but um, I, they have a, a similar approach. And, uh, they're, like, I, I remember uh, Stefan did an interview with someone about um, uh, about uh, uh, downloading music illegally or whatever, and he had a whole different point point of view on it. And um, you know, it's like if if people are actually doing that, that's that's good. That's good for the musician because they're they're actually downloading. It. They get to to hear it, you know, before it comes out or, or whatever the case is, you know. And 
I don't know, man. It, it's respectable what you guys do and it, what what you two do and what Stefan do, and that's why I like that you guys are all in like the same band and uh, you guys know what's going on and you. I don't know, man. I have a lot of respect for that. So I, I, right I on, dude. Right, thank you. <laughs> made a fan, made a fan out of me, man. Probably everyone listening. <laughs> I like the downloading thing, you know, I, I remember when Napster first came out and, you know, I was, was right there. <laughs> I was right there, like the fact, and, but this was my take on it. We started with Lars at that point. Uh, no, 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 I, you know, this was before, no, no, I was, I was cool with, I was cool with Napster yeah. with the fact that, oh my God, I can now look for all these songs that I don't have. Right. And I get them in my collection because this is going to cost so much money for me to get and some of them I don't even know their names so I was going download crazy I, I have to admit because I just I love music like that my my one and only, my one and only job paid like regular nine to five job was working at music plus okay and I that I I loved be just being around the music so that's what it was and Cyprus, we did a free Napster tour with us and Limp Biscuit. Uh, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Like the, mm-hmm. and that and Napster kind of, that's a lot of shit that was starting to happen with that. But we did that tour. It was free for the fans. And and it was it was great. It was just like, okay, we're here with this music, you know. And, that's awesome. And, and it was great. But, you know, you have... The the downside is when you have people downloading the demos or shit that's supposed to be on the album and you're leaking it when you're not supposed to. Yeah. And, right. Right. Yeah. yeah that right yeah. there, that yeah. should be kind of. Well, that's, up. that's quite disrespectful in that regard. I think you know. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, I if you're thinking, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No that's dirty. That's what fucks it up because you know. You know, why are you going to put an album that's coming out in two months, you're going to put it out there for the public now? Right, right. I I totally agree with you on that. The artist has to repackage the album, Mm. take out some songs, add some new songs, so it's not the same package. Mm. But the majority of the songs are still going to be there. So... It's you know it's not going to have yeah, that impact. Like, yeah, it's like locking the gate after the horse is. Yeah, so it's 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 totally fucked up. So in that regard, you know those people that do that should get their hands chopped off. Yeah. To me, you know, because they're really <laughs> fucking they're they're fucking shit up. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I mean, look, music is you know music should be for the people and hmm. and. I, I guess right now the way to make the the your true money if you're out there is do touring and merch and shows and all of that stuff and you know that's the independent hustle hmm. you know I think it's getting back to that you know that true independent hustle because what are the big labels doing they're scrambling they're just right. figuring the, what the fuck they can do hmm. you know you have people like Macklemore and uh, Ryan Lewis that did it all independent went platinum on their own. So their platinum is like on some 10 times platinum money-wise. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they don't have to deal with a major label. They did it all themselves. And the label, what are they going to do? They're going to try to sign them. Yeah, well, we can offer you a deal. Why am I going to go with you? I did it all myself. Mm-hmm. You want my money. We'll offer you this deal, 360 deal, blah, 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 blah. That's where the 360 deals came. Oh yeah, we'll give you all this money up front, but we'll have well, your mean, publishing, your merch, and everything yeah. like that. You get the balls on that. No, no. Yeah, I think no. The, the majors are kind of they're scrambling now because it's their own fault as well because they they stopped developing artists. There's no more development anymore. And um, I've been in the situation before with like I said my first band. I had an experience of that where you know I did everything effectively by the book. You know we we did. I did uh, two like you know high quality music videos. Um, I went out to New York uh, with the singers and kind of did the uh, like the trade shows and stuff and met people and did all the schmoozing and all that. Um, and it was all just you just get met with bullshit, you know. And, and even to the point right. where I get to, I get to a major label and they say, right, um, yeah, we really love your stuff, 
and they always want to hear the next song. They never actually, that's the whole trick. They kind of, you take songs there and they're like, oh, have you got anything else? And there's always that excuse. Um, and I remember a few times I've kind of gone there and then said, right, yeah, you need to do a track like, like this. So I go, okay. So I went away and I did a track exactly like they said, you know, as far as, I'm not doing the music they want, but I, I did it in that style and I thought, okay, they can see what we can do now. I went back with the track um, and the guy was like, I love it. It's great. And that was it. And I was like, okay, you know why I'm here. I'm not to hang out. You know, I'm here to, you know, but the basic thing, and he was honest with me, he said, look, man, he said, I really like you guys, but if I go to my boss, um, he's going to say, how many records have they sold? And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to sell records? I don't have the money to make the records. I can, I can make the music, but I can't sell records now. Um, and he said, well, that's just how it is. And that's the problem. They, they want you when you're a finished product. They don't want you, they don't want to do any work at all. They just want you, they want to get all the spoils of your, you know, of your hard work and take mm-hmm. it and repackage it. Now, if they kind of did what they used to do and they went around and they saw someone who could sing, who could play guitar, and they said, right, I can, I can see, because I can see it now. I mean, well, I want to get into development, really. That's what I want to do as far as, and producing as well. But I meet people every day who are like, amazingly talented and they just need a little a little bit of guidance a little bit of advice um not even a lot of money just a bit of time um to do what they do and the major labels stop that completely because they'll they don't want to invest any of that because it's a gamble for them they just want the spoils so that ruined it and now you've just you don't have that whole bit of the industry is missing now so independent wise it just takes longer because you have to develop yourself so you get to a point where people actually want to buy your stuff um, which is, you know, it's still a good thing. I'm, not, I'm glad we've done it this way. I wouldn't have done it any other way. But sure. it, it's such a better process if there was more people in the development side of things that could say, yeah, I can, I can throw 10 grand at you. Let's, let's get you in the studio for a few months, you know. But there's not that. And that's where you come to realize that none of these people care about music at all. They just care about units and, and money, and, and that's it. They don't care about what they're putting out as long as it's selling. Um, and that is the major oh. problem. You know, the charts is a joke, and and the BBC, oh, yeah. like, like, they, I mean, you've got shows there, um, main, like, you know, alternative, you know, oh, we're bringing you the freshest new music. Do they bother? <laughs> like, it's bullshit. They they play either their friend stuff or what they're told to play, and they'll give you this right. impression, like, yeah, 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 we're playing all the up-and-coming stuff. And even if you've not heard it, I know for a fact that that particular song they're playing has already got, you know, two million views on YouTube. So to them, it's a safe bet. They're like, okay, this has been approved by the people. We're not going to take a, you know, take a out on a limb and go for it. The only person that ever did that in England was John Peel. He was the only person that actually would play stuff that no one would have heard that he liked. All the other guys, they just play, you know, they play from the, the song list. They're just like, okay, I'm going right. to go and play that. And um, it's, it's, you know, it, it's bullshit. You know, if, if you just actually were really pushing independent music, why not throw something out there that no one's heard because there's plenty of music out there is good enough the quality is just going to continue to deteriorate too because if you look how stupid people are today oh yeah and and those are the people that are uh that the record companies are trying to satisfy that they're the ones that are demanding this stupid music so it's just going to get continuously worse you would think yeah yeah. and um i mean i'll give i'll give you an example in this regard i was at i was at a death tone show um, and this is this is how the industry is to me, and this is why I stopped caring about it. I'm at a Deftones show, and there's a guy there from the BBC called Zane Lowe, right? And he's like the main guy on a Friday night. Um, right. He's a massive Deftones fan. He's also a massive drum and bass fan. So I've approached him. I'm already, you know, I'm, I'm with the guys, so I'm, I'm backstage. We're hanging out. He's around. I went up to him and went, oh, hey, man, how's it going? Introduced myself. I said, yeah, I'm working with... Um, I'm working with Steph on a, you know, like a drum and bass project. Right. Now, to me, right. as a music fan, right, he should have gone, oh, yeah, I want to hear that, or blah, blah, blah. Um, but he kind of looked at me and went, oh, yeah, you can uh, tweet me. And I went, what? And he goes, yeah, just, just, just tweet at me. I'm like, well, what sort of response is that? And then, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it wasn't like, yeah, man, this sounds good. You know, this, this guy's working with Steph. I love this band. I love drum and bass. What Let's at least hear it. And it and it was just like he looked at me blankly, and I just thought, and it, you know, I just thought, well, it's all it's all talk. There's no actual. Yeah. You know, From there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, wow. To be fair, to, to his credit, I did tweet him, and he tweeted me back. But it was just like, yeah, man, thanks. Well, you know, and it was just like, right. you know, 
Right. So, so how how does somebody that's like you know got, got uh, all the talent in the world and, and and coming up and you know how, how do they get through? How do they make any sort of uh, you know breakthrough nowadays? Then, well, I think your first port of call is is to put it bluntly: stop giving a fuck about what anyone. Says. <laughs> <laughs> fucking right. Uh, fucking right. Absolutely. Fucking right. Yep. And then for, yeah. just remember, if you if you're an artist and you're out there, just remember the reason you should be doing this is because you want to. You know, you want to be create. You want to create something. Um, I mean, as Stefan was saying this the other day. It's like, if you want to make a difference in the world, you have to create something. Um, otherwise, you're always going to be working for someone else, effectively, um, until you create something new. Um, and that's what it's about. If you sit there, forget. Literally, I mean, I know, I know so many people I'm working with now, and they get so panicked about, you know, oh, how are we going to get this to there, and, and how are these people going to hear it, and what about this? And it's like all these are variables we, you don't need to care about. Just create your product, create your album, love your album, and then just give it to the people. And then if people like it and it's honest, they'll share it. And then people will be knocking at your door saying, you know, Sol Invicto is a good example. If anything, even if it kind of ends tomorrow, I'd like to, it may have set an example whereby you don't need to care about any of this business. Like our stuff's gone out there. And from nothing, with no press, um, you know, me and Eric sit on Facebook. That's it. I talk. I talked to. I probably spoke to every one of our fans on there. I reckon at some point um, had some kind of interaction, and that's built up like twenty thousand people from from nothing. Wow. And like, and it's not a lot when you look at other bands, and you're like, yeah. But I know for a fact I'd rather have you know a thousand real you know real fans who are gonna like you know buy our, support our merch, buy our stuff, or just literally tell other people about us, then have a mm-hmm. hundred people who are just like, oh, these guys are quite hot at the minute. Yeah, let's, let's check these guys out. Um, because I, I want a career. I don't want a, I don't want a five-minute flash in the pan. I want to be doing this the rest of my life. So if you respect the people, you'll get the respect back. Um, and, and that's how it is. So I think people just need to think about their art, release it, and then just you, you've got to lose control. You've just got to kind of go, right, I give up control of what happens Whatever happens is going to happen because I've done everything I can as far as I've done what I shouldn't have done, I've done what I should have done, and it always comes right. to the same result. You haven't got the control, you know. I've been in situations where I've given, like, like major, um, like, you know, probably one of the biggest artists in the world. I've given them a track. They've loved the track, um, like quite a commercial track I made, and they've took my number and they've done that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is great. Let's get in touch. Nothing came of it, and I'm in a situation where I'm like, this isn't, this shouldn't be real. I'm, I'm with people that, you know, th- this is ridiculous. The situation I'm in now, and they still, it's just bullshit all the way through, and it gets your hopes up, and then you're like, oh god, it's not going to happen, and that's the point when, you know, I just thought, right, I'm just going to release it, and then, I'm, I'm happier if someone hits us up and says, yeah, I, I'm playing your track in, in my car, or, yeah, you're wearing your t-shirt in, you know, in right. You know, that, that's what gives me the satisfaction. So I just say people have just got to do their art and, and enjoy it and, and don't think about the money, anything else, just, just let it be. Um, and they'll, they'll do well. If they're going to do well, they'll do well. And right, right. If they're good, they'll do well. And don't try to conform to no, what, what they think is going to be hot. Yeah, exactly. And as soon as you do that, you're going to be chasing someone else. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, right. I mean, you can look at any... Like the, it happens all the time, you know. Any any genre kind of blows up, and then everyone's making it, and it's hilarious. And the, but the first guy is always the one they're like ridicule, like oh that's a bit weird. And then all of a sudden it becomes popular, and then everyone's doing it. Uh, right, right. And see, the longer it goes on for, the worse that music gets. Like it just it, it, it kind of you know dissolves and and gets diluted, and then you end up with something. You end up with all the kind of you know the bottom feeders who are chasing this tail and making really bad music. And they've, they've missed the boat, and it's already gone into something else. So you just do you. Whatever it is, just do it, you know. Um, yeah. and, that, and that's right. it. And, just, and that was my whole point of even though me and Eric come from different places and me and Steph come from different places, we've ended up at the same point, which I think is quite poignant because they've gone through the mill and they've, they've done everything. I've come through, you know, underground, doing things my own way without any help at all. And we've ended right. up at the same, you know, train of thought. So... Yeah. That you know, that's the truth in it for me, really. That's, exactly. that's, that's sobering. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Thanks, I don't even know what to say at this point, man. We got all the <laughs>
<laughs> seriously, like it, 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 I don't know. I, I mean, I got lots to say, but it kind of to have these two guys on and, and to say what they said, it, it's so, it's so respectful. Uh, I don't know, man. It's good to hear that we got people like that. You know, I mean, it's 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 uh, you know, to, to kind of uh, see things through a more more open open eyes. You know, it's it's not better or worse. It's just different. You know, and sometimes you just have to, you know, just be open to that. You know, there, there's nothing there's nothing wrong. You know, opinions are not necessarily wrong. You know, and they may not work for one, but they may work for another. But it may not even apply to you. You know. It, it, it is. It is what it is. You know. It, you just have to know how to how to play this crazy game called life. It's all. <laughs> what it is. Yeah. And you know, we were able to uh, reach people through the music. And if you know, if some of our words or uh, thoughts or ideas can you know influence or just make people think, you know, that's a big thing because I, I like to do that. You know, that's why some of these. Theories that come out, you know, right, 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 right. Yeah. They might be edged, but man, it, as long as it makes you think, hmm. you know, right. that that opens up exactly. things. And you I guys personally are, think that you, you guys, guys are making yeah. other more than uh, more artists are. And uh, well, that's the point. Yeah, yeah, they're challenging yeah, yeah. the because like the, they're challenging the people that put crap out there, and exactly right. you, that's the point Perfect. of it. And as long as you're keeping Perfect. it real. Yeah. You're you're countering the garbage that's out there in the same way that the new media, you know, the internet is uh, is countering the old media, you know, the mainstream media, and, and so it's like a, a double-sided sword that, or that's not a good analogy there, but it, it's it, yeah. it definitely has its uh, significance because it really, I mean, and that's the only way it's going to happen is if you're keeping it real that way and being true and not giving a shit if you offend people or, and, and you just speak from the heart that way. Yeah. And, and, and instead of, uh, pleasing your, uh, you know, the, the stockholders or, you know, the record companies, you're, you're pleasing the fans and, um, and you're doing what you feel is right. So that's all that matters. I mean, yeah. and that's, and that's going to naturally counter all the bullshit out there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're only you know you you're only responsible for what you say. You're not responsible for how people take it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly. it. Exactly. That's it, man. And, I, and also, I mean, it's not like you know, I'm not of the mind where I don't really think uh, our music's never going to be, you know, preachy. I'm not. I don't. My opinions, obviously, are not going to come out in our music. Like we're not going to be doing political songs and all that kind of stuff. It, it's purely music for me. But I'm not. You know, I'm not going to hold back on talking to people. It's not, you know, I'm not going to. That's the difference. I was, I was just talking to the WikiLeaks guy. He was going to do something on one of the songs, but now you said no pull. Pull that up. After that, after that stuff I said, I definitely can't go back on that. <laughs> but yeah, but no, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you, in, you know, we're not. As musicians, it's like obviously musicians have got a voice and stuff, but if you use it in a in a way that you know you shouldn't be being preachy is not you know no one really wants to hear preachy to be honest. But if you hear honesty, I think that's if more people were honest, that would be good um, rather than sort of this is our agenda. Don't buy this and don't go to this place. You know, it's just like I just want people to listen to our music and it be you know that's our music. It's not really going to be uh, there's no agenda to it. It's just literally art as far as I'm concerned. But also, I like the fact that we can talk on interviews and we can, you know, we can talk about what we're doing and, and what we think about it. Um, oh, yeah. Because there's not a lot of that. Everyone, I mean, you listen to any interviews now and people just say the same thing. Like, oh, so, uh, you know, what three records would you take if you got stranded on a desert island? And it's like, <laughs> really give a shit about that. <laughs> like, and they repeat it the same every time. And that's why... <laughs> Cutting that out of our lives completely um, right. makes your life easier because the person interviewing you doesn't care. They're just told, you know, I've seen so many interviews where you just, you're, you're cringing because <sighs> you're just going through the mill. You don't need these people anymore. That side of the industry can just end. Like, you don't need it. Like, magazines yeah. finished because they're so arrogant. Um, I'm, 
I'm all for like I'll talk to people like you guys, uh, any independent people that want to speak. To, even like if someone comes with the right approach, we'll talk to anyone. But as long as they're coming and they want to talk to us about what we do, and and it's not because of you know all of a sudden we've sold a few records. It, it just as long as it's genuine, I've got no problem talking with anyone. Like, I'm not against you know, music press. I, I like the fact there's more independent press. So I'd rather hit up, you know, 15 or so smaller radio shows where people actually care about music than go, oh, yes, we're going to go to the BBC now because they've summoned us. We've we've managed to come above the radar. And, you know, and obviously there is that with this project because of who's involved. It does put us slightly on the radar. But for me, that means the music's got to be really, really good. Um, so that's what our, our aim now is just to, like, now we get together, we've kind of released, you know, we released some little tracks and I've got our third instalment of the EP. I'm mixing that now. But they're all kind of just finding our way, you know, demos. I'm proud of them, but they're not, you know, what I really want. When we put our debut album out, I'd hope that would be kind of like the definitive sound of what we do. Um, and then we just go forward from that. But I just hope that other people might see what we do, you know, independent artists and go, yeah, maybe I don't need... Um, any of this nonsense, I can just do it myself. So that is the plan. Um, but yeah, we we kind of want to play live. That's, the next step is just to get out there really and do a lot of live shows, and hopefully we'll start that kind of later in the summer. We'll start rehearsing and go from there. So oh, good. Oh, please, please tell me you guys will come to the east coast of the states. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> you, got, you guys got to because you got three fans right here that are just dying to go to a show. Awesome, let, me, let, me, let me throw this out here right now because cool. I, I have to throw this out. But um, you guys, like, I know it, it like gets in with like with, with uh, Def Jones and everything, and I know Stefan has issues with 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 that and and matching it up. But uh, you guys. Actually, you can come to the States, uh, 2012, uh, Deftones headlined Kabang Music Festival in Bangor. And um, and then Stefan can tell you about it, because I, I know that he can, because he played okay. it. And, uh, and we have this festival up here in Bangor, and my ex-girlfriend runs the whole festival. And the only reason why she got Deftones to come up here was because... I asked asked about Deftones and uh, yeah, so she had Deftones and Stefan can tell you he can he can tell you that he came up here because that's how, I met Abe I met Abe on that night and I uh, stood on the stage with Deftones and uh, I, if you can like work something out and I and I'm throwing this out here you know like if you like mm-hmm. Cypress Hill Deftones and and Soul Invicto I uh, mm-hmm. can do it but um it. it, it it's it's probably the biggest festival up here, but um, I don't Sweet. know. I, I know. I know that you guys can do it. I know that you can, and, and I can hook it up, and I'm not trying to, like, be an idiot about this or anything, but, like, you, you definitely can. Uh, it's, it's, it's in August, and uh, there's at least, like, 20,000 people that, that come to it. So I know you can – Sol Invicto and Deftones – and then even maybe even Cy- Cypress Hill can like work it out or whatever, but just like get in touch with me, I can like definitely hook it up. But um, yeah, so yeah, seriously, awesome. come on, come, that that was my thing because like uh, in in la- last year, I I mean I mean 2012, I got to do that, and I met met Stefan, and that was the first time I met Stefan was in Boston of hmm. the beginning of uh, uh, this year, and. Um, well, 2013, not the beginning of this year, but the beginning of last year. And uh, that was the first time I met Stefan. And uh, I, I actually sat there with, like, for 45 minutes with Stefan and had a good conversation. There was people coming <laughs> up and saying, like, like, oh, can you take our picture and all this stuff? And, like, everyone was, like, all starstruck. But I was sitting there, like, having a conversation with Stefan. And everyone was like, "Oh, take take our picture, take our picture, or whatever." And I know Rich, 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 I know Richie has seen the picture because he's on, on Facebook yeah. and he he saw the picture of me and Stefan. So that yeah. was a yeah, yeah. So that was a big thing with with me. But like honestly, like that would like I I know for a fact like that's that, that it's it's definitely a big thing up here and. Uh, if, if like you guys as a band want to come to the to the East Coast, I will absolutely set this up, and um, 
I know I can, and I'm not just like talking like shit or anything like that. <laughs> 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 it sounded like a gig to me, but uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, we're gonna finish this album then. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 you know we're excited to to finally you know bring bring this music to the stage because you know I mean. Yeah. Yeah, every, yeah, uh, every, yeah, yeah. every time I, yeah. I mean, for me, every time I hear it, and I, I'm like, wow, what would this look like? What, what? Yeah. Is, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm bummed out that I won't be able to see it. <laughs> you know, I've never been on it, but just to be able to just live the experience, like, oh shit, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, that's what I kind of want, you know, from our shows. I want people to leave out of there. Saying, "Holy shit!" What? <laughs> right. so, so, okay. You want them? You want them go home and tell all their friends about it? Like, man, I just see this killer yeah, fucking yeah. show. Okay. So, uh, one one question I did want to ask was like, I know that like uh, I saw some posts from Richie and like they were talking. You guys were talking about a vocalist. And, yeah. Uh, do you guys want to? You guys must want to do something with a vocalist. And I know Richie did say something about a female vocalist. I did see that not too long ago. So, yeah. Um, what do you guys we, think about that? We're definitely we're, we're open to it. And like I said, the it, at the minute, I just want to get the music finished first. Um, yeah. Yeah. But we, so, it, I don't. Yeah. We don't want it, I don't really want to have a front front man or woman. I don't want to have that. Um, but live. We're gonna need. It's like another instrument for me, and I think that if we get the right person, right. that's not in a rush. If it's an instrumental project, so be it. Um, if we find someone that fits what we do, then we're gonna go with that. But there's never gonna be, you know, I don't want a front man um, at all, right? Because I just it right. would be. Right. Right. Yeah. So. And, and that's cool. That, that's awesome. That, yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's part of the I, reason why I respect you guys so much. But yeah, I mean. Because, you know, they could just come in and take all our hard work and claim it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I was thinking, you know, like, you know, if we had Rihanna out there yeah. at the front, you know. <laughs> yeah, front, yeah, front of the aisle. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. You guys couldn't get, you guys couldn't get Beyonce. Well, you never know. You, yeah, know. you never, you never know. If she's going to be dancing and doing all that stuff with her, I mean. Yeah. You know, I mean. <laughs> We get, yeah, we we get them both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you guys get, really? Yeah, yeah. On the inside. <laughs> and next, you know, next, you know, we're back here next year with Beyonce chatting, talking about how she hates the industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's divorced, okay. married one of us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just a soul and she says has uh, soul and Victor chain, you know. On a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. You know, but but you know, I mean, as far as the vocalist thing, it's like, man, it's got to be somebody special. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree, man. And, and I, also, and I, I think you guys, want to be someone yeah. on as well. I don't want to, you know, like, I put up a suggestion, like, you know, anyone got any ideas? And it was people that have been in massive bands already, and it was just like, that's not really, I don't want to go out with another guy, and then it's like, oh, this is another side project for this guy. Right, so it's right. It's like, yeah, yeah. wonderful. Um, it'd be nice to find someone unknown, you know, someone we just bring out and they're like, this is our, our guy or girl and people are like, never seen this person before. Um, that would be much better. So Yeah, you know, because so I mean, sometimes when you get the, the famous lead vocalist, you know, their fans come along because they love the vocalist. So oh, they're just going to see yeah. where they want to be there to hear the vocalist. Oh, and then so yeah. and so yeah. and then they'll critique the show based on what the vocalist did. Yeah. You know, so it, it's gonna take yeah. away it's gonna take away, you know, a bit and, and I mean and, and yeah, none I of heard. us, you know, I mean all of us, you know, instrumentally, you know, are, are playing our roles, you know, and there there's not like a, a front lead, you know, even instrumental wise, but it, it it's a thing that you know it just has to blend in, and it has to just be undeniable. Like, oh my God, did you hear what I just heard? Kind of shit. Yeah, you know? yeah, perfect, right. perfect. But you know, if it's not like that, then you know the music can stand on its own, yeah. and and it'll be an experience. That's you know, and I, and I think the worst the worst thing you can have as a as an artist is 
like indifference. Um, I'd rather someone hated it with a passion or loved it, not in the middle. It'd be, you know, because that's the way I, I view anything, really. It has to trigger something in you. And if, if people are going, yeah, that was okay, that's like the, the most insulting you could probably be, I think. But I'd rather someone, I hate it, I never want to see that again. That made me feel sick. So, so, some of my favorite albums that ever, like that stand out the most, like the first time I listened to them, I was like, oh, well, they, they, you know, and then I went back to it. It's just like become, you know, some of my favorite music ever. And, and it's probably because it does just, you know, ha- have a different, you know, there's a, there's a different feel to it. Yeah, and it just, um, but I think that you can get that in any kind of music. If there's an honesty in the music, it kind of comes through. Yep. So it yep. definitely works. So, you know, I'm not a fan of house music, but I can hear when people who make house music because they love it, you can hear the difference than someone who's like, yeah, I can make a few, you know. Right. Um, so that I think that's important as well. Try and just, you know, like I said, we've, we started, so we're going to carry on like this and... Um, you know, the next step will just be to, you know, finish our album, get out and do as many shows as we can with the time permitted and just carry yeah. on, really, you know. And, you know, we do, we do, I'm doing, we're working on a lot of remixes as well at the minute. I'm doing some stuff for Eric, um, for a few of the, you know, a few of his artists that he works with. Um, and we do remixes for other bands and stuff. So, you know, we're quite open to, you know, doing stuff. And, and also, uh, on the last EP, we had uh, one track was just, it was like 50 samples that fans had sent in to me um, that me and AJ just kind of chopped up and made into a song. And I quite like that as, a, as an idea because it brought fans into the project, which is nice. Right. Mm. Mm. So you just, you know, just trying to be as creative as possible, really, without any distractions. Yeah, well. I mean, what's cool is that the fact that, you know, we're we're here, it's not just uh, here together as opposed to uh, just relying mm-hmm. on just sending tracks back and forth. Yeah. Cause you get right. just you get a certain feel with that, yeah. and and I'm not, I'm not knocking people that do that because you know I've done that myself. Mm-hmm. But sure. musician, you know, there's nothing better than being able to come together, you know, and and and, and talk your ideas out and try them out and you know be there and vibe in the same room. Even oh, absolutely. If, even if you're just there talking ideas and and don't even power the studio on, but just that vibe, that 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 mm-hmm. thing, you know. Right, right. Important. But this, but there's gonna be something about being right there in the same booth and the same studio and just, you know, like bouncing ideas and just, yeah, you know, yeah. getting into the whole vibe. Yeah, right. exactly. You know, you know, and instead of like wondering, uh, like. How is my part going to be used because I'm not there or I didn't, yeah. you know, I just sent and, you know, see what they thought about it. And, you know, even when you're recording it that way, you don't have, you know, the other person to kind of bounce off of and say, well, try it this way or try it a different way or no, I don't like that at all. You know, you're just going on, well, let's see what happens, mm-hmm. you know, and and that's a 50-50 crap shoot. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It is, it's, like, it's the truth. Yeah. There's times when you're glad that, you know, people aren't listening, certainly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, that was exactly. it. But, you know, cause you, you could come up, if you were in a room together, you could you could be jamming for, like, hours, and then, like, there'd be 30 seconds, which would be, you know, that will end up being, like, a, you know, a really great song. And uh, you wouldn't ever get that if you weren't together. So um, that's, uh, you know, that's quite important, I think. For, you know, for any band, just being in a room together is is always good. And for the recording process as well, like rather than tracking separately, it's nice if you can track at the same time and you know get the energy going together. Oh yeah, sure. So yeah, that's that's where we're at really. Um, other than that, um, me, yeah. Other than that, we're just uh, enjoying the the rain, the much needed rain <laughs> that here in LA. You know, because uh, the city needs it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> You guys were <laughs> desperate for it mm. for a long, long time, you know. So you know, when it yeah. rains out here, no one knows what to do. Yeah, you know? they're a bit like weather amateurs. I mean, oh, it was yeah. a funny thing. It was early. It was uh, uh, there was a weather alert. You know, you know the the alert, the emergency broadcast system. You know, yeah. and they're <laughs> so you know, and he, he's never seen this, you know. So, you know, Richard's there, and my wife, she, she's not from the States either, so they're both looking 
at the TV and it's the <laughs> world going to come to an end. I saw this kind of <laughs> and I'm looking at like, what is this saying? Like where's the flash flood warning? They're like, What right. the f- are they serious? What's here? Yeah. And they were they started laughing. You know, so yeah, it was, it's it's it's, yeah, it's it's been fun. Yeah, been definitely. Fun. Yeah. So that flips it back to the because you know people here are smart, but the media just runs it out so dumb, like it's crazy. And same in England as well; they kind of talk to you like you're a complete idiot. Um, oh yeah. So I, I can't normally watch the news to be honest, because it's all that that cadence of like you know, listen to me, and here this is what happened. You know, it's all ridiculous. So you know, I think uh, yeah, there's, you know, a lot of smart people here, but the I, I just couldn't believe the the storm warnings. I thought that was hilarious, and it's raining. <laughs> And let, yeah. and let's, you know, it sounds like a fucking alarm clock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Get knocked on the door like, rations time, everyone's in the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're not kidding about that alarm on the TV. Every time I hear that, it freaks me out, and I think, like, some crazy catastrophe just happened. Exactly. You know, ah, ah. Right. All the noise, oh my god! I mean, it's, it's about to go down oh, yeah. right now, you know. And then the TV, <laughs> right. there's some dude on the TV, like some complete idiot who ended up in a storm drain, and like, <laughs> time, and, like wasting their time to come. And I'm sorry, yes. just, just, you know, it's just, yes, it's, yes, with a, with this umbrella fucking blowing in the wind, yeah. he can't quite hang on to it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's um, I'm just glad to be here tracking with these guys. So it's uh, it's nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's good. It's a good time. Mm. You, you're in a Richie, Richie, you're in a perfect band. So thanks, mm. man. You, you Wait, got right. the guys around. You got the perfect guys around you right now. So uh, yeah. That, it, there's, there's a lot of uh, fans that are really appreciative of what you all do, and uh, it's I don't know, man. They, I'll speak for everybody right now because I know there's a lot of people. I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of fans that are uh, would would like to be able to like talk to you and 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 tell you that. But uh, yeah, you and Eric, man, you, you guys are rocking shit, and uh, it's good that there's two real real people that uh, uh, do what you do, and um, oh yeah. It is, it, it means a lot. It does. It means it means a lot to the fans. It really means a lot to the fans what you do, and uh, it does. I don't even know what else to say about it, but uh, no, I yeah. know. I know it does. I know people tell me that it means a lot. I got people like messaging me and stuff, and and just like like wow, man, these 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 guys are for real. And um, of course they're for real, but I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you got a lot of respect. Uh, coming coming to your side, so I mean, definitely, it's, it's, it's appreciated by everyone. Yeah, we appreciate that. We appreciate just uh, being able to to be on the platform that you guys uh, yeah, provide for us yeah. to be able to to do this and and to to speak, you know, our views, you know, and I mean, if you know, if there's people out there again that you know hear something that you know makes them think or can make them, you know. You know, it's something a little clear for them, sure. you know, right. and all, 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 all the more, you know, better, yeah. you know, for that. And, you know, and if the music touches them, you know, that that's great, too, you know. And so thank you for oh, yeah. that platform. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. we need to after I've just slagged off the BBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fucked that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Not bothered. <Yeah. laughs> That's so all good. Nice one. Oh. Well, yeah, man. Yeah, thank, th- thanks so much. I, you know, I, I know the fans are like definitely like fa- even though I like I thank you guys for coming on and everything. Like I, yeah, I appreciate Richie for like keeping contact with me all week because I, I actually I've never had a guest <laughs> that contact <laughs> with me all week. But like uh-huh. it's cool to actually talk to uh, Richie all week. And I'm honored. I, I really am, man. I, I'm just honored that that Richie, like, that you like actually, you know, you know, you you kept contact with me and you you were talking with me, and, 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 and you know what I mean. That's that's respectful, man. And and, and people respect that. And uh, I don't know, man. You, you both are, you're fucking awesome. 
That's all. I don't. I don't. I don't know what else to say, man. I'm like honored to have you on the show. That's fine. And, uh, so, you know, we really appreciate, you know, all the fans and everyone kind of hitting us up and sharing our stuff. It, it does mean a lot, you know. So, so it's all like a good thing, man. So we, we're good. Yeah. It couldn't be any more clear that it's a lot to you, and that's what that's what I love, man. You you actually show that, and you show that it means a lot. And uh, I know there's fans, like, like listening tonight, and they're like, oh, wow, man, like, wow, these guys actually give a shit. And, uh, yeah, that's. Hey man, that's the way to go about shit right there. So I mean, okay. Okay. I mean, I'd respect both of you, both of you, both of you. You guys are fucking awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys very much. Seriously, man, dude. Like I don't know, man. This is like out of this is the 40th show that we've had. Okay, so this is like our whatever 40th anniversary or blah 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 whatever. But you guys are on it, and uh, you guys are fucking rock it. <laughs> guys are on like our 40 of the show uh to me oh, yeah. and uh mark and jeff definitely it definitely mean, it means a lot to have you guys on and i know there's like it, it, i know we broke the record tonight i i know we're probably at least maybe at ten thousand tonight i can't wait to see uh, I'm, I'm not trying to i'm not trying i'm not trying, I'm not trying to like but you know i don't know man that's you no know, uh, no, 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 dude. We're at least. Pa- I, I guarantee we broke the record tonight. But yeah, maybe ten, but not not <laughs> ten. <laughs> it means a lot. It really does mean a lot. So, and this, is, this, is, this, is, this is actually probably the best conversation that we've had. And yeah, the best uh, two, yeah, two be. down to earth uh, guests that we've had. And um, and Man, mad, was mad. Was mad like, we get up there it's to Spain that, you know, we'll probably uh, have a catch up. Yeah, yeah, have a nice conversation over some beer. And, and, and lobster is popular out there, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll show you guys how to party up here in Maine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like I said, man, I, I'll get a hold of Richie, man. You guys are going to do some sort of tour over the year or whatever. Just, okay. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep in touch, and uh, I'll definitely talk to Richie and, um, Really, man. Seriously, Thank dude. I'm up much. there, like at, at least New England or whatever, man. I'll be there, dude. I'll get a hold of you guys, dude. I'd love to meet you guys. There's no doubt about that. Um, you guys are like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. I'm honored. I'm honored that you guys are on the show tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, God. No worries. Okay. Well, yeah. we we'll do, man. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks to all the people that are listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it uh, as much as we did. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, they did. They did. <laughs> All right, guys. So, yeah. All right. So, you guys, you guys you have another uh, radio interview or something to go on tonight, right? Yeah. Give me with, a uh, Please. With Be Real? Yeah. That, they, <laughs> so, you guys are like, you guys are like warming up here with us and they're going to, you know, so... That's really no, no. That, that's even... I won't be on the audio show, man, because I, I checked out. I checked out that game. <laughs> Eric, 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 look at that, man. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, that's an, that's another. That's story. another story. That's yeah. another story. Then you know. I stepped, up, I stepped up to the big league and then just got smacked the fuck. Yeah, out. you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way. It's my yeah. fault. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. You know. Thanks so well. We're so friends, though. You know, we're so friends. <laughs> yeah, okay. They're gonna go out there and they're gonna do their um, radio show up there at Bees. And um, yeah, man. Then I'm just gonna I'm gonna carry on mixing and we're gonna get together with Steph next week and carry on with the um, recording. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and and when you guys are like got that that stuff done, man, just you know. You know, kind of keep me in the loop here. Uh, I definitely want to hear uh, what you guys got going on, obviously. Um, you know, no send it to me. Yeah, no yeah. problem. You, you could be like the yeah. guy in the commercial. Yeah. And, uh, the guy that sits in the chair, right, and then listening to the music has a sound system. And then it's kind of blaring at him, and it's like it's like a thousand mile per hour winds. Of <laughs> that's, that's how the music is going to be coming at you. It's, it's, nice. Yeah. It's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> it set me up over here. 
yeah. <laughs> cool, guys. Nice one. Well, all right. Well, uh, yeah, we'll let you get on with the uh, the show, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you very much again. Yes, thank yeah. you. And Thanks, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Thank, thank you for coming on the show. For Some sure. Days, like I said, I know I know I said it enough, but it's an honor to have both of you on the show. You guys are you guys are awesome. Indeed. And, and, and Eric, uh, happy birthday to uh, your dad. Oh, you know, oh Eric, um, man, thank you very much, man. Absolutely, man. Definitely a legend. Uh, definitely, I have two. I have two old records from your dad that came out of a collection of my grandfather's, and uh, that's how. I kind of how I uh, you know knew knew about your dad I, you know but I do have two 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 old records and one of them is unopened and uh, I don't want to open it but yeah 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 but the other one yeah so I got the uh, Willie I got two Willie Bobo uh, uh, records and that's 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 pretty honorable awesome. uh, your dad your dad your dad is you know I mean that's that's very honorable so I just I, I meant to throw that out earlier but um thank yeah, you very much thank you very much for that. <laughs> mad cool. respect mad respect to you Willie and yeah so all you guys man thank thank you for coming on no you got it peace see, see you soon have a good night but have have a good night guys yes bye right. bye bye. Wow. Damn, yeah, man. Wow. That, that's that wow, got to wow, be made wow. into a YouTube video Dude, that, pronto. That, absolutely, absolutely. Get right on to that. The best <laughs> show that we've had. Those guys oh, yeah. are the best. Dude, can, dude what the... Dude, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mad respect, dude. Have you not have... Uh, I, mean, I don't even know what to say, man. Dude, that was... Fucking incredible! Yeah. How cool! How fucking cool are those guys? Really? The, dude, that's the two coolest guests we've ever had. I, I'm sorry, dude. everybody. I'm sorry that the fifty no, guests no. that we had on, uh, there's yeah. nobody that caught that. In uh, no, no, no. I, I'm not even sorry because it's true. It, no, it's I'm totally not sorry true. Either. I'm not sorry either. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I am sorry that I didn't get to play all the music, but I, we will play the music that I have lined up. But uh, I'm not gonna take a break on that, dude. Uh, but, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I love no, all the no. guests, but no you're there's right. No breaks. This is... there's, there's no breaks on that, and uh, yeah, yeah. Those in, are two in, legends right there. In their own, and, uh, in their own, in their own respects, they're like. You know, maybe a couple of the biggest guests we've had. You know, in the in their own respect. You know, we've had some very well, big guests. Not, but it, it, for me, as personally, those are my two he, biggest I, guests. I, I'm I'm, I'm gonna go out. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say the Eric Bobo man, Cypress Hill dude. I mean, you know, 13, yeah. 14 years old. I I mean, I've loved him ever oh, yeah, since. Yeah, 20, yeah. Twenty years later. Both of us, yeah. Both Dude, of us. I was jamming oh, the fuck, shit yeah. in the car a few weeks ago, man. I, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that all of us were looking at Cypress Hill when we were that young. So, I Dude, mean, oh, yeah. great, for sure, 1992, man. It's a, leg- yep. a legendary night. Oh. Oh. Welcome to CAB Radio 2.0. Here are your hosts, Chris Perkins, Mark Cummins, and Jeff Giles. Um, so yeah, so let's welcome our next uh, guest, uh, Richie Lundris and Eric Bobo of uh, Small Invicto and Cypress Hill. Uh, Richie, what's up, man? Hello, sir. How you doing? <laughs> awesome to have you on. We uh, we've been uh, really excited to get you on here. So uh, it's a big Pleasure. deal for us tonight. <laughs> mm. We've been talking all week, and uh, yeah. So I mean, it's, it's, it's a big night. It's a big night. It's Friday night, man. So uh, Friday, we just all want to Friday night. In night. Yeah. Well, good night seeing you with Eric. So um, we'll. Uh, Ready to roll? Awesome. How you guys doing? Oh, hey, how's it going? Chilling, chilling. Just, uh, just right here. 
Alright, good. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So yeah, man, I, I was on the, I, I thought I was going to get stuck on the um, the listeners bit then because I couldn't work out how we were dialing in, but I'm glad we did. So. Right. Uh, yeah, and, and apparently, so I guess what did you have to you have to like make an account with Blog Talk yeah, Radio. Yeah, we're, we're oh, uh, on my own radio show. <laughs> if I want. So. Yeah, yeah, that's that's bullshit. That's bullshit as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> You shouldn't have to like make an account through them to do that. But we, right. the thing is, like, there's some some guests that we've had on haven't had to do that, and some have had to do that. So I don't know what's going on with that. But maybe maybe because he's British. Yeah, it's because I'm English. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that could, yeah. Okay. So it's your fault, Richie. It's all your fault. I, think. <laughs> I tried to warn him. I tried to warn him. I know. So uh, as soon as I arrived here. I had the weather in New York kind of, um, yeah, stopped me from getting to L.A. And then I got to L.A. and now it's raining, so it probably is me, I'm guessing. You guys, you guys have some sort of crappy weather out there anyway, so. Oh, yeah, it's standard this every day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. Like, we, I mean, like, a lot of our uh, guests are from the West Coast, so when okay. they find out that me and Mark are from Maine and they find out Jeff right. is from uh, Pennsylvania, they're yeah. like, you know, I kind of, I, I kind of get jealous because, like, oh, it's so nice and warm out here, and like me and Mark are up here in Maine, and we're yeah. dealing yeah. with all like snow yeah. and yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. This is fucked up, man. So, I have to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, in the winter, in the winter, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have your good days, but winter time is not the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Me and Mark, me, me and Mark are used to it, and that, and that's the thing with Maine. Like, we are definitely used to it. Um, yeah. I'm thin skin, you know. West Coast, you know, so anything below sixty is, you know, freezing to me. <laughs> oh, geez, you wouldn't like um, it up here very much. That, <laughs> no, 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 no. See, you should, you should see when I bring him up to London. He's uh, got oh, a jacket. No. Yeah, I'm like hat. triple layered. You don't even know it's me. Yeah. I'm ninja'd up. Yeah. And it's summertime as well, so there we go. You, you guys, you, get, you, you both need to make a trip to Maine and spend a couple of days up in Maine and just kind of get used to it. I'm not going to take it back anymore. It's like, oh. mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm screwed. I mean, because that's all we do on this show is speculate, you know, and like <laughs> hypothesize and, and <laughs> guess. Well, not all the time. Maybe you do, but I don't know. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, if you're kind of going out. Hold on a sec. Yeah. This is what it is. This is definitely how it is. This is what's going on. That that's quite a big risk because you you can't tell for certain what's happening. You know you can and I you know I, I'm in the industry. I've, I've met some of these people. They talk about and it's it can be further from the truth about them personally. Um, it's just what you get. There's a lot of it's the circus. You know you've got you've got flashing lights. You've got videos half the time. You, you know one day to the next. You know these people are so busy they don't even know what they're doing. They just go okay here video shoot today touring tomorrow. It doesn't actually, you know, it's not like they're sitting around going, okay, right, we need to do it like this. And it's just, you know, it's just too busy for them. So, you know, I, I, I think, you know, they're kind of missing the, missing, like you said, it's a distraction. It's missing the kind of real deal and it's kind of going to the glamour and the lights and going, oh, yeah, those are the, you know, they're, they're involved in that. And, you know, I, I don't think that's really the case most of the time. I, I don't really believe that. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, it's... Uh, you can talk about any industry. It's the same thing. Exactly. It is. It, it's oh, like sure. back in the day when they found out that sex sells and they started using that to... Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. And yeah. and now it just seems like it's uh, it, it's not enough anymore because sex is just everywhere. It was played out. So now it's the occult, it seems. Yeah, exactly. Every every kind of generation, you're going to have a trigger that kind of... Regardless of how you, how you think the overall plan is or if there is a plan that it, right. it's, it's used as a method because they you know they know our triggers the marketing people you look at any advertisers marketing it, it's, it's quite sinister how deep it goes in that regard you know like there's people sitting around going you know if you listen to any kind of bill hicks describes it best and things like that when you when you've got people who sit around thinking of products they can sell to people they know are gonna they're gonna hurt them but they don't care they're just trying to find a way to get you um there was quite an interesting thing i was watching on the plane over here actually and it was uh you might have seen it they, they were kind of testing how babies respond before they can talk and communicate properly to sort of good and bad 
and they had uh, they had one puppet who was green, one puppet who was orange, and one of the puppets would try and help another one open a box, and the other one would try and stop it and cause it a problem. Um, and they kept switching them around, and so it was kind of all the variables had changed. And then the babies were shown the puppet, and they always picked the one that was generally good, um, like 99% of the time. And this is when they're about six months, you know, before they can kind of articulate properly. Um, and even even though that's interesting, that's still quite scary as far as how they can start studying us from that age to go, right, okay, we need to, at this age we can sell them this, at this age they'll be into this, and it, you know, it's, you know, you just have to watch kids TV and like, you know, with colours and stuff, and it just kind of stays with you. Um, that, that I think is the most dangerous thing out of anything that, regardless of, like I said, what you believe the overall plan is, I just think it's quite dangerous how we're manipulated, especially right. these technology from such a young age, and there's no escape in it really, unless you, re- you really have to kind of go out and become like a, you know, a, a guy living in the woods to kind of get rid of it, and, it's, and it's, it shouldn't be like that. You should be able to have the option of, you know. Absolutely. It's, like, like, it's heavy, heavy conditioning. Yeah, it's dangerous. Whatever the app, I say, it's just dangerous because you get people who are not thinking for themselves. And um, I mean, I've noticed it in it's all over the world. But you know, I'm driving around in London, and when they were associating themselves with like mafiosa kind of talk, things like that, to give it a bit of a and more of an edge as well. Um, so these days, now you've you've kind of got all these artists tagging on to this, you know, secret society stuff. When a lot of them know it's just going to wind people up, it's just going to get them attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a bit, it's kind of a lot of plastic imagery, in my opinion. And because it, it's so in your face, it's just like, it's too ridiculous to kind of, you know, to, to really comprehend they know what they're doing. It's just like, you know, it, it's a way of, it's a way of selling records, you know. To right. Right. Yeah. You got the people that do that for that attention and they, they have their, thing of why they're doing it, but the the people that are really maybe maybe are involved in it ain't saying it. And right. I, you know, they're they're just on the DL just like how a lot of things that we don't know <laughs> are on the DL or we know but they're all on the DL, you know what I mean? But I, I'm I, I'm saying that it is just really you know, the way that the game is played in a way, you know, you you have to latch on to something and you know that uh, the public or society is kind of clinging on to this thought of Illuminati or, or secret society or whatever the case, you know, why not talk about it? Why not give out some clues because they've read a couple of books and, and they know a little bit uh, about what, you know, that they may be about and, and, and then, you know, let's profit from it. You know, it's, right. it's it's just part of some people. That's the way that they play the game. You know, you're, you're getting somewhere there. I mean, there's the people really behind the scenes that we should be concerned about. Yep. I mean, because if yep. anything, all this entertainment stuff could just be uh, like a distraction to like mag- mag- yeah. magician sleight of hand. Like, look over there. You know, it's them, yeah. and they're just really just actors, uh, like representing what it's like. But they're pro- half of them, if they are involved in it. They can't take it that seriously. I mean, they can't be that uh, into it. They, I guess I guess some of them probably could be. Like, they could think there's some sort of, like, witches or sorcerers and, like, playing around with magic or whatever. But I can't see them, like, being taken too serious by the actual uh, people behind the scenes, the oligarch, whatever you want to call them, the Illuminati, as, some, you know, as most uh, refer to them. I can't see them taking these uh, entertainers too seriously and like well they, like, they, they probably they probably don't but then they they probably welcome the distraction from what they're really trying to do because right. see that these people of influence that are talking about it are going to have a lot of people that are going to follow their lead and if it's going off in a completely different direction than what uh, the real deal is going on they're going to welcome that and oh, yeah. uh, and the shit is really going to go down, and and they're not going to know how it happened, you know, because it just came from a whole other different way. Hmm. So, I mean, so possibly, I mean, Mark Dice could end up being uh, doing a disservice. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so, well, that's, I know. That's the kind of, you've got to question everything, obviously, no yeah. matter what, you know. Um, right. And 
any anyone that questions stuff is, is doing a service you know whether they're, whether they're kind of right or wrong you know they as long as if you're passionate about something then I think that's where it kind of comes into it but you have to be careful with these days as soon as you say something it's out there it gets taken as gospel and then that's <laughs> that you know you kind of can't go back from that so you have to be very very sure about what you say about any particular subject these days because you, you know you can't you know, <laughs> just do it. It's something yeah. you should do. If you got a checklist on, you know, or some sort of bucket, bucket list or whatever, man, come to Maine. Just come to Maine during the winter and spend, like, a week up here. Like, maybe in, like, yeah. January or something, dude. You know, oh, just do it. That's just do it. Not, stop, 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 do it. I'm not afraid. That is funny. That is oh, man. <laughs> I'll have to uh, I'll have to write something on their plane tickets like we're going somewhere else. We're going to Hawaii and then uh, switch them up. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Trick you. All of a sudden you're getting off in Bangor, Maine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the, I know that Stephen King is around there, right? So you know. Yeah. You know. I know he's got his house heated up, so he you know <laughs> maybe go over there and hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so it's your uh, it's the 40th show, yeah? 40, yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations yeah. Yes, thanks. You're <laughs> 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 like, oh, man, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, no, we're excited. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to get a bit of uh, sarcasm over in the States. I like it. I'm not used to it, so it's nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you'll, yeah. Get, Wait, you'll get a lot of sarcasm yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm right at home. Definitely full of that, full of sarcasm. There's no okay. doubt about that. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we're I'll really pleased to be on the That's it, man. That was like silence right there. Silence, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Tumbleweeds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know what direction you guys want to take this. I mean, what we want to talk about here. I was hoping it would get more into like the conspiracy sense, but uh, oh, of course Jeff would, because Jeff is the uh, conspiracy theory guy. So uh, don't don't <laughs> pin that shit on me. You're not gonna blame it on me. It's my bet. It's, it's, blame it on me. It's uh, everything. Yeah, sure. No, it's, it's uh, oh. that's what people want to hear. That's 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 what's uh, you know, the mysterious. That's what uh, like Mark Dice. Uh, video type. What do you think about his videos? Because I mean, I'm sure you know of who he is. Yeah, I've, I've seen his videos. I mean, he's um, he's quite sure of himself, I guess. Right. And, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's quite confident in what he says. Um, <laughs> but for me, uh, with all this stuff, it's you know you have to cross-reference a lot of different avenues until you can kind of find yeah. your own truth in it. You know. So I kind of take everything with a pinch of salt, and then I'll kind of feel out yeah. what I think. It relates to me, you know. I can't just hear someone and go, "Yep, that's definitely it," because everyone's trying to shout their opinions. And I oh, guess yeah. you know, that's how that's how it works. So, so it's um, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, so you, they, they bring up some interesting points. Um, certainly, I think some of them. The the thing that gets me is sometimes when you're not part of a scene and you're looking from the outside in, you can get some misconceptions. I think, and you can go a bit wild yeah. with it in anything. Yeah, I, um, oh, I, you, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. So, so what is this scene? I mean, how seriously are these people taking it? Is it just like for, uh, for exposure to sell, to sell, uh, to sell records to, for, uh, controversy? Is it, uh, or is it something more? I mean, I mean, in my opinion, we're never going to, you're never going to truly know what goes on, you know, really. Um, you can have an idea, from, from what you know, in my, from what I can see, it's like in the same way you had in the '90s, you had hip hop, and you just get people walking out in the street without even looking at the cars. They'll just walk because they're on the phone, and and it just happens. And this has only been a thing happening in the last five years, and it's like it's quite scary. Yeah, yeah. no one's well, looking. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. I mean, it, it, it it's got to be a collection of things. I, I mean, it, it can't just be. You know, uh, influence from the government or the education. I mean, it, it could be all sorts of toxins. Who knows? I mean, you know, that's why I can't be an advocate for one thing. You got advocates that are just, you know, for chemtrails or whatever, geoengineering, and then you got people for fluoride. There's, 
then you got radiation. It's it's like everything. It it seems to be that everything is just being used against the population to make us more and more stupid. And like you said, it's like get them while they're young, you know, and like uh, indoctrinate them at a young age and feed them. It used to just be seem to be like that way for religion, but it 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 it's just it's just like that for they want to like teach sex education in preschool now or something i don't know about that that's just crazy they're, they're trying to make it you know it's, it's going too fast you know technology is going too fast it's all going too fast there was there was a time that we were kind of ahead of the curve on that you know technology wasn't moving that quick but even in, in that in that retrospect now the technology is even far more advanced than we are at right now that we don't yeah. even know. And that's the shit that you have to be afraid of. Yeah, you're not kidding, dude. Some heavy, heavy duty shit that that is so out there that, you know, we won't we couldn't believe that it even exists now. And it gets that gets into the wrong hands, you know, yeah. where it's done, you know, so You're not kidding, dude. That's like a huge concern with the that the singularity and the technology is just gonna keep getting crazier and at one point you know, yeah. it could just become like the Matrix or something. Yeah. Like, you know. and, and you know, it's gonna it's gonna happen that you're gonna get the the big companies gonna continue to swallow up, and it's gonna gonna be monopolized. You know, and right. You know, eventually it's, it's gonna be that real big brother shit, it, it, but ten times worse, maybe. You know, I don't know. Well, that's a big thing. You're talking about monopolies. I mean, we all know monopolies and like corporate interest. You know, with the government and fascism, like. Technically, that's what fascism is, just the merger of corporation and government, and clearly we're there. But, I mean, that's the thing. People see, like, monopolies. They know it's true. They know that, you know, some technology is being suppressed, but they don't look at, like, the monopoly of information. Information is, like, one of the key ways to control us. So it makes sense that there's a monopoly on information, and they use – they can use science. I love science, but it's like a lot of these scientists seem to be in the back pockets. And if something doesn't go the way they want it to, then grant money, funding gets pulled, and, and uh, anything that could possibly benefit humanity just seems to get suppressed. Yeah. Like, like I was looking, like there's like a cure for AIDS or something in 1996, a, a patent number and all, and it's out there, but it's just not being taken advantage of. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because uh, I was in Spain uh, a couple years back, and there was a, a thing on the news talking about uh, an actual cure for HIV, mm-hmm. uh, something that has been tested and has been proven. And I was looking at that, and I knew that I was never going to see that in the States. Mm-hmm. You know, they right. weren't even going to talk about it. They weren't even going to mention this or say that there was a, any kind of discovery like that and I was right because I had right. it 